YouTube, what's going on? Air of Carthage here, and we are back in the Gore Rock campaign. And just in time for some ritual fun. I think that we're actually ready to probably kick off one of the rituals. I haven't fully rebuilt some of my settlements, but you know what? Um, some of them get burned down every time regardless, so you know what? We, 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 let's just get things going. Let's just get things going. Let's begin the ritual. It's going to be at Itza, the Awakening the temple. However, where it's going to be at doesn't always necessarily dictate where they drop in these forces. I think they just try to spawn where you're not and burn as many of your settlements as they can get along the way. That seems to be the, um, the MO that the AI operates under on that. I, I think their spawn is random. Does anybody know for sure? Does anybody know for sure on that? I think it is. Someone wanted me to name one of these... Um, Skinks here. I don't know if this is the one they intended, but someone wanted me to name one of these guys the Wonderful Lizard of Oz. Alright, here we go. I gotcha. Error. Gotcha. We got the Wonderful Lizard of Oz, folks. <laughs> we got a Wizard Lizard, and we got the, wiz uh, the Lizard of Oz here, basically. Oh man, what do I want to do with this one? Arcane Conduit. Still can't get old Steggy. Alright, here we go. Um, is this gonna be Croak? Yeah, we can't do anything with Croak. I need to get that mod that lets you s dump skill points. Um, let's see, we're gonna begin the ritual. The ritual is underway, my lord. Even working together, it will take your greatest right, Where are the spawns gonna be at? Complete. Such is the ritual's power that the great vortex itself distorts under its pull. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where's the baddies? Though, for while the vortex is weakened, the forces South. of chaos will slip into this world. Ready your defenses, for they will doubtless be drawn to the ritual's power. All right, what they're going to do is just rip up everything to the south. That was where I had the fewest troops, and it does uh, seem to be dictating how they spawn based off of the fewest troops. I'm kind of thinking about if I rush up to the Hissing God here, I can s mount up a really strong defense. May get this army killed, but I can take down a lot of them with me because Patchy's army is going to be pretty potent. Especially if he gets into... I can't do it in a regular stance. And I don't want the uh, Skaven to ambush me outside of the settlement. I hate doing this because my troops will start the match tired, but... I feel like it's better for me to just be in the settlement there, and then let's, um... How come this guy's not recruiting? Is it that... Local effects? It's gotta be that stupid, like, weather thing that was on us last time, huh? Yeah, unseasonable weather. One more turn. Let's just keep, uh, just keep heading south at full speed. We're gonna need the folks to be ready. I didn't catch a spawn of Norskins out to sea. Uh, let me just look around, see if we've... If anything, they would go for Marks of the Old One, I would think. So I'm going to head around to the Marks of the Old One, and let's take Gustav the Great Croc and maybe just head to resettle Chotek. Not a massive important goal for us to have, but... Okay, we're on the move. We're on the move, and I believe we're ready to end a turn. Let's repair this building that got damaged. I guess the agent got it, probably. If I had to take a guess. Wow, we're going to get attacked immediately at the Hissing God. They do have Hell Cannons, which is honestly a bit problematic for us. We do have some flyers though. If we can um if we can play smart with our flyers, we might be able to get around and shut down the hell cannons. And if we bottle up in the settlement, I think with these ancient steggies, it's gonna be hard for the enemy to not get really pooped on. But they do have some chosen, those are tough units. We'll see what we can do. Should be a fun battle. The Chaos Sorcerers representing Archaeon fell into Lustria, thinking that they would conquer the primitive lizards, and they asked that if the lizards would just offer a sacrifice of water and earth, you know, kind of like that Sparta movie, that then they would be spared. 
So they asked for the sacrifice, but the leaders of Itza had an answer, and the answer was, this is Itza. This is Itza. <laughs> you guys will see that this is going to be a fun battle. It's going to be kind of 300-esque in a way. I know, I can't comment it right. I get it. Um, but this is going to be very 300-esque in the sense that we're going to be making an epic stand against a barrel. very powerful force. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to use my Pterodon Riders and Ripper Dactyl Riders to some advantage here, where I'm able to use the Ripper Dactyl Riders to keep the attention of the only aerial unit, and there's no Marauder Horsemen here, because these were high-tier spawns. So my Pterodon Riders are over here absolutely wrecking the first Hell Cannon, and this leaves the second one open. I'm going to get a charge. Now, this will likely quickly attract the attention of Chaos as soon as I hit the ground, but it'll give me a chance to do a lot of damage here. So I'm going to see a swoop in and be able to do some tremendous damage here against the Hell Cannon. This will bring all the Chaos forces back towards us. But like I said, I'm able to use a little bit of bait and switch type tactics here to be effective. One Hell Cannon down and a second one on the way. Now, what does that mean? What's the setup here? Well, I've got a few Chameleon Skinks kind of hiding in plain sight like they can, and I'm allowing Chaos to break the gates, and then I have set up an absolutely epic defense. And here is the defense. The front is going to be Skink Cohorts with Javelins, and then behind them the Mighty Saurus and Temple Guards will be holding their ground alongside the Stegodon engines of the gods. And then we've got Patchy here, the old one. Patchy the Slan, and he is a life slan ready to support his troops. He'll mostly be just giving them the Shield of Thorns, I believe, uh, which is going to be adding some physical resistance and weapon damage. Very nice spell using the right situation. But yeah, we've got two engines, and then we've got one Arc of Sotek. And then in order to take on the large units, I do have a two Salamander hunting pack sitting in reserve, and then I have a lot of Saurus cavalry. They are all sitting in reserve, awaiting their opportunity to engage Chaos. Now, the dragon has breath attacks, and I am in a position where I will have to be quite careful of breath attacks, so my plan here is to busy the dragon for as long as possible and try and get myself into a good position to not have to soak up the breath attacks. And right here he fires one off on my Ripper Dactyl Riders. This was intentional. I'm trying to bait this. And after he turns around and can't get a charge, I'm actually going to chase him down with the Ripper Dactyl Riders because I don't think that this sorcerer on his dragon is going to love fighting so many unit models of armor-piercing, albeit not anti-large, but armor-piercing monsters. So the first wave of Chaos has arrived. A lot of knights and trolls, since they're the fastest, the Chaos forces did not wait for the reinforcements. I'm going to throw in some Cold One spear, one, uh, spear Riders, support them. And we're going to have some uh, Temple Guard mixed with Saurus Warriors as the backbone of this, so that way there'll be plenty to help hold back all of these armor-piercing, large, angry units for Chaos here. But with the support of Patchy, we've got some pretty serious um, strength over here to kind of hold the ground. You can see that the Chaos Sorcerer is in trouble. He's busy shooting fireballs at Patchy, but Patchy is a little concerned with the fireballs there. He's just going to keep supporting his troops. You can see some healing going on over here. So look how we're just kind of grinding Chaos in this fight. And their Fire Sorcerer is in the middle of this fight, and he's not in good shape. He's up against some extremely tough infantry, and they are defending their homes. So the initial wave of chaos up front here has been driven back. You can see now with the Pterodon Riders in the back and the Ripper Dactyls in the front, the Sorcerer and his dragon was not able to hold his own. He's going to be driven from the battlefield and chased away, so chaos is going to lose both of their leaders early. This is going to be a critical loss for them, potentially. I'm going to throw some Horned Ones in here now that this fight is settled. The Horned Ones have higher melee defense and dish a lot of armor-piercing damage. So they'll be a good addition to this fight after the charge and should be able to cut their way through any remaining Chaos Knights or Ogres. Uh, trolls, sorry. Any trolls that are left here. You can see that the defenses are holding strong on every front over here. Some Chaos Knights attempted to get through. And my Scar Veteran, along with his troops, are going to come in here and hold them back. And then here comes the Bastilladon Arc of Sotek. And it's going to be like snakes on a plane, just without the plane. We're going to be releasing the snakes just about everywhere we can here in just a moment to start trying to eat through some of this Chaos Cavalry. 
Now, the three Chaos Giants are kind of holding back, awaiting their turn, and the Skink Cohort with Javelins has been great. These guys have saved me from all the charges, from all the stuff, and it's been just a really, really useful unit, as Skinks can be in the appropriate scenarios. You can see back here, just nothing doing. Chaos cannot break this flank. They are absolutely stymied. Um, and just not able to get through. Now, the first giant has decided that he's going to start potentially making his way up here. And my salamander hunting packs are awaiting him. You'll notice that I've saved my ammunition. Haven't even fired. And the steps to the, uh, the town citadel here are well guarded. This almost kind of looks like the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The benchmark battle in a way. Obviously, it's not high elves here, but you got the lizards in this type of setting. So you can see the first giant making his way up. I've used an Awakening of the Wood to slow him down even further from Patchy, and he is just getting lit up by the Salamander hunting packs and is already at half health before he gets anywhere near my lines. And he will go down very, very quickly as the Salamander hunting packs are just made for this low armor, large target like a Chaos Giant. So they're going to singe their way through him quite quickly. His char-grilled corpse will soon litter the street, and his buddy will be on target next. Now, more and more chaos kind of piling up over here. They've brought chariots, more trolls, more cavalry. They are just getting nowhere in this fight. My units continue to be supported with the, uh, you can see here, the Shield of Thorns and Earth Blood. It's making them very difficult for chaos to chop through. And when I say difficult, I mean it's just not going to happen. See my Scar Veteran over here, pushing back against more Chariots. And we're going to unleash the first Burning Alignment here across some Chosen with Halberds. They were engaged with my Skink Cohort. The Skink Cohort was about to go anyway, and so they asked to go in a blaze of glory. And their wish was granted, and they will forever be remembered for their bravery. Now, the second Giant's down, the third is in the back, and my Salamander Hunting Pack still have some ammo. You can see yet another Blob beginning to present itself for a burning alignment, and folks, this is going to be a good one. Perhaps one of the best burning alignments that I've ever unleashed. And you know what? I've really not ever unleashed enough burning alignments. <laughs> Can you ever have too many? So yeah, that one just shreds through a very dense pack of expensive chaos units. You can see that they are now truly suffering over here, whereas they would have had some chance here with all these chosen. And then, not only that, not only did we demoralize them with the Burning Alignment, here comes more Horned Ones, more Saurus Warriors, and the Ark of Sotek has decided to move over to this flank. I'm going to try and plow it right into the enemies here, and then unleash the snakes over here as well. and see what we can do to just continually pull down all of the uh, hit points from this extremely high-tier Chaos enemy that we have here. Here comes the Horned Ones. So we are just really laying into it. Look at these horned ones over here. They've taken almost no damage. Oh, wait. These are the ones that just got into the fight. My bad. My bad. We had we had a couple of spear riders that have been in this fight for a long time. They're doing quite well. My right flank never had any significant threat. And at this point, uh, there's still just a bunch of Chaos Knights. There are some Chosen with great weapons moving in. And the last Chaos Giant is sitting back. And oddly enough, the AI is guarding the gates. I think it's because they know I have these Chameleon Skinks out here. So... It's actually working to my advantage, and I'm keeping my flyers around in case we need to chase away any key routing units um, later in the battle. But for now, we're okay, and you can see here that the line is being held magnificently by my Temple Guards, Saurus Warriors, Saurus Cavalry, and the Ark of Sotek. Chaos is just not going to get through. This is Itza, and they will not survive. Now, my Scar Veteran came over here to help fight some Chaos Cavalry, and he got a little bit dinged up. There is a lot of Knights with Lances here, so I sent forward some uh, Temple Guardsmen to support him. Temple Guards Lizard Men? <laughs> They're not just men, right? See, uh, Chaos in some pretty significant trouble here. Some pretty significant trouble and I have two burning alignments left and if their giant comes anywhere near me he's just gonna get burned to a crisp so I'm gonna wait for the remaining chaos units to kind of get in a sufficient blob we're gonna need some reinforcements for these blessed Saurus warriors so I've got some blessed temple guard moving up behind them 
And I'm going to try and retreat through the Temple Guard here, and then draw these Chaos units into a braced Temple Guard. So, kind of using a Roman tactic almost here, like bringing up fresh infantry and then retreating through it, and bringing the enemy into fresh braced troops who are fully ready to fight. Plow right on in here, the Bastilladon. And here comes the snakes, folks. Poison snakes for everybody. You can see the Chosen are like, uh, nope. <laughs> they know that snakes are known as nope ropes. And so they, uh, they're they going to stay clear of the Arcasotec there, which is kind of melting away at the hit points. So pretty tough fight from Chaos. However, now I've also got my Chameleon Skinks. They've used the ladders that Chaos used. And I was able to scale the walls. And I'm going to bring the Chameleon Skinks back in around the Chaos troops. But we now have some good setups for some burning alignments. Um, so we're going to start launching those now. You're going to see the uh, first one come cleanly across what's left of the Chaos on this flank. Just absolutely shredding them. So Chaos is definitely going to be defeated over here. Then the final burning alignment should cut nicely across this blob in the middle, which is now just full of Chosen. And they're going to rout before it ever even happens. They knew what was coming. They knew what was coming. Had they stood there much longer, they would have been vaporized, no doubt. So quite the fight. This is Itza. This is not for Chaos. Chaos out. So, quite the fight there. <laughs> quite the fight indeed. And it looks like the uh, the Tomb Kings, their little their little uh, parade's about to get rained on here too. It's not allowing me to have reinforcements, huh? Why not? I don't get that. All right. I guess I attacked the wrong army. Why? Huh? I guess I'm gonna get to reinforce because I'm not in the uh, settlement here. Let's. Here we go. I gotta attack with the settlement. That's what it is. Because they can't get out of the settlement when they're sieged. Makes sense. So I gotta attack with Virakara, but he'll be. Uh, no. Why? Hold on. What is going on? Why don't I get my reinforcements? Which one's sieging? Which one's sieging? This one's sieging. Yeah, it's not going to give me reinforcements. <laughs> That's frustrating. Well, uh, we'll just wait this turn. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to siege me out in the one, one turn, and I've got a pretty solid garrison in Lothern, so they would be hard-pressed to pull that off. The only challenge is that's going to allow these High Elves to get quite a bit closer. Fortunately, it's not Dragon Spam, though. That's that's a benefit. And, uh, unfortunately for us, Patchy, the great old one, um, managed to hold out like an absolute boss here, taking very low casualties. To the point where we can probably just auto resolve this out. We'll lose. Um, let's see, we lost a couple of Saurus warriors and some Ripperdactyl riders. Should be easy to replace, but then that gets the Skaven army off the map and leaves the two Chaos armies. Uh, well, it gets the one Skaven army off the map and leaves the two Chaos armies in disarray. Go ahead and head down here to Guacamol Crater. And let's continue our march to Chotek. And march to the Awakening here. Haven't seen the Norskin guys yet, but doesn't mean they're not coming. So just see what we're up against here. We've got a Sara Scar veteran who leveled up. Let's just uh, continue and scarred, uh, scarred veteran for the scar veteran. Yes, that's that is a mouthful. 
Really need Arcane Conduit. But Dwellers Below would be good. It would have been very nice in that battle as well. So let's kind of work our way towards that with Patchy. We can get a couple of the Saurus Warriors back just like that. And then we're just missing our Ripperdactyl Rider. Which shouldn't take long to recruit from the Global. They may siege us, but even if they do, at least we got a couple of our Bless Saurus Warriors back pretty quickly, though they won't have some of the Chevronage that they did before, unfortunately. Let's see here. Saurus Scar Veteran. Let's give him some... Give him some weapons. Poor guy deserves something. Who should take that Potion of Toughness, actually? Be good for this croc, because he has to get up in melee. Frenzy on a unit. Alright. Just add a few of those things. Let's um see what else we need to be building. Should have a pretty sizable chunk of change at this point to run through and see where our most important builds are. We're gonna focus everything first on defenses. And let's see here, select next. Yeah, all defense first. Caldor's Repose, get some defenses, exotic animal trading. Already building defenses at Kayaks. Let's build up the Geomantic Web. Pull up the port. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some other stuff here. Let's get some extra income because we can. And uh, we'll just uh, throw this building in here too. Let's pop up to the highest tier settlement. Defense, trade. Alright, um, I think we're going to be good here. Let's go ahead and end the turn. Uh, Elite Denar is going to take my buffer settlement up here. That's that's okay. Did I, I think I just spent money there too. Whoops. Alright, we got attacked by the Skaven in the middle of the turn end, and they're going to come straight at us because they have artillery. Probably not real winnable for me regardless. Oh, never mind. We'll take it. We'll take it. A little freebie. A little gift from the uh, the auto resolve gods. A rare gift, I should say. Quite rare. How do they get this good of a chance? I mean, seriously. Yeah, I just I don't I don't see it. I just I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'm not buying it. So once again, the auto-resolve is kind of working on its shenanigans, saying that Valmir here of Chaos has a pretty good chance of winning this battle. Well, I, you know what? I suppose we shall see, right? We shall see. Well, the first to welcome them are going to be my Salamander hunting packs, which know that these trolls who are weak to fire damage are really, really happy to see them. Yeah, sarcasm intended. I mean, if, if it's the troll's intent to die a fiery death, then they're certainly in the right place. You can see that my salamanders cut these trolls down in a big hurry. I'm going to fall back and continue to lead them forward. I have cavalry out here along with some pterodon riders to support. And the map allows me to have a choke point, and I'm just going to pull chaos right on through it into the loving and waiting arms of Patchy. And he is just waiting to uh, share some of his magic with them, you know? He's a healer. He won't be using that healing on Chaos, but, you know, he'll he'll heal them of their existence, I guess, if we want to think of it that way. So you can see the main Chaos Force going to push on through. There's going to be some of their elite infantry coming over here to challenge my cavalry, and we'll have a little fun with them. A little friendly fire over here, because it wouldn't wouldn't be air if had a little friendly fire. But I'm going to use these uh, garrison, um, what do you call it, garrison spear riders to take out the warhounds. And immediately I'm going to use an Awakening of the Wood, try and slow these units down as they come through the gap. And then hit them a few more times with my Salamanders. You can see we're literally raining fire down on them. And it is pretty effective. And now my Chameleon Skinks will be in way. I'm just moving, um, they're in range, I'm just moving my Dinosaurs out of the way. 
only a couple of Ripper Dactyl Riders for this fight, so they're going to mostly take it easy. And as the Giant comes into range, I'll begin to target him down with my Chameleon Skinks. While my Temple Guard hold the front lines and should be able to do well against Chaos. You can see I'm going to be dropping some bombardments and we're going to be playing some messing with Chaos games here where I just kind of start running all over the place and the Chaos units are too slow to catch me. That's the way I want it for now. Going to be some Shield of Thorns and some healing here on my infantry on the front lines, similar to the last battle. Apache able to support and keep his troops in the fight for a very long time and allow them to do what lizards do best, which is destroying things that don't belong in Lustria. <laughs> and ensuring that the plans of the old ones are carried out. You can see that my skinks are really enjoying giving this giant a good poisoning. Giant's not making a lot of progress because he's up against Temple Guard. There are a lot of chosen infantry that are in the fight, and that does concern me a little bit. If they had to stay there too long, let's take a look. So you can see the Giant's almost gone already. Those Chameleon Skinks will be making short work of him. Valmir is here running around, momentarily kept safe by some of his chosen warriors, but you can see again, I'm just kind of spreading out all my mobile units, and then the Chaos who chase me over here find themselves being bombarded by my salamander hunting packs and having their time wasted and when chaos wasn't able to defend against it i've now used my horned ones and we're going to break through and these chosen here are going to get a classic hammer and anvil charge used against them and the horned ones are actually quite good in this scenario as they rip through armor and they've gotten a rear charge clean in to the chosen who are smashed up against Temple Guard, who also going to be dealing armor-piercing damage, so it is like an armor grinder up here. And then we're going to bring the Spear Riders in to help finish off these Chaos Trolls. You can see that uh, the auto-resolve prediction of this battle was, once again, quite inaccurate. Quite inaccurate. Now, the Chaos Reinforcements are coming, and they were hoping to uh, catch up with my cavalry, but obviously this is intentional. The rear charge has been completed, and my cavalry is going to pull out of the way and leave Chaos's infantry to face my own. And then I've still got my burning alignments here, and I'm just waiting for Chaos to get aligned so that we can give them an appropriate burning. Look at that. Taking one for the boss. My Bastilladon shielded Patchy from the uh, incoming fireball. Now over here, this uh, Chosen with great weapons thought it was tough. And found itself completely sandwiched between salamander hunting packs, dinosaurs, and Saurus warriors. And it's not so tough anymore. And then the burning alignment lets the Chosen know that they were indeed chosen. Chosen to be burned. And that's about all they were chosen for. Alright, so as I thought, decisive victory. <laughs> Got nice uh, armor off of him there. Uh, the Gambler's armor is probably better. Helm of Discord's pretty good, honestly, too. Let's give it to Taitza. Actually, wow, we got... Yeah, I don't know. We'll keep it on Taitza. I'm sure we've got other characters that need to... Yeah, pick up some armor. See our Skink Priest here. Let's give these guys something. Give them something. Anyway, so we've basically defeated our enemies here. We're just waiting on the Ripper Dactyl Riders to recruit. And Chaos really has nowhere to run to at the moment. We've got the uh, we've got the map all covered up. And unless someone calls a um, what do you call it a uh, intervention against us. Should be pretty safe. Should be pretty safe. Those are big words, though. Should be. <laughs> Let's check out our army here. We gotta level up uh, the lizard wizard. Still no steggy for him. He's still got a number of skill points to go before he can unlock some stegadon actions. Finish up wind blast. If we run into any skaven stacks, it can be good. Skip past croak. Did uh, no one take it? No one took action here. That is incredible. They certainly should have. Oh, I forgot. I cannot. I... Come on, air. 
Let's get in the game here. I can't get reinforcements when I attack with Gorok. Now, I could probably just beat these guys with Gorok. I don't, I don't think these clowns can stand up to me alone. We're going to fight this one, because uh, if I allow the AI to do it, we'll take a bunch of unnecessary casualties. Well, King Rahotep is feeling quite confident here. He's just going to go charging straight into a Dreadsarian. I'm sure this is no ill omen for how King Rahotep's dynasty will end, since he's going headlong into the waiting teeth of an angry dinosaur. But you know, whenever you're looking for your dynasty to be short, it's a great way to get started. You shop to you're going to get showered by my <laughs> by my uh, Razordon hunting packs. I almost said salamanders, but these are no salamanders, folks. And King Rahotep's army is not far behind him, and it's going to be engaging um, and then uh, we have some forces coming in from the settlement garrison that will be coming in from behind and then the great white lizard himself has entered the battlefield on this flank and the tomb king reinforcements are attempting to pin him deep in the woods here and they'll accomplish it they're sending over their constructs you can see two kimrian war sphinxes and then here some nehekaran cavalry as well as chariots, but in the forest over here, there's no way all those large creatures are going to be able to cut through my infantry, much of which has specific anti-large damage. It's just not going to happen. My ancient salamanders have done a good job of brutalizing some of the Tomb King's uh, halberd infantry, but on the flanks, I'm looking to go ahead and clean up these sepulchral stalkers. These are going to be very tough units. They have anti-large armor-piercing weapon damage. And then they have armor-piercing uh, poisonous missiles, I believe. Or no, just armor-piercing missiles, no poison. So, anyway, it's going to be a tough fight. These horned ones aren't really completely up to snuff for this fight, but I had to get something engaged with these guys, and then I'm going to swing more cavalry their way. And now we're starting to get some reinforcing skinks from the garrison. And these horse archers back here are about to find themselves getting their range thrown back at them. Now, there are some Necropolis Knights with Halberds here as well, and I've got some Spear Riders engaging them. It's going to be a very tough cavalry fight over here. These units have all taken buffs in the region patches for the Tomb Kings, and these are some real heavyweights when it comes to a large fight like this. So my uh, Sarist Cavalry are going to find themselves stretched to the limits of their capability. You can see over here that the right flank of the Tomb Kings has kind of collapsed. I'm going to collapse in on them. I've been pushing my Razor Dons forward to eliminate the Chariots. And then we will go after the Sepulchral Stalkers, and then eventually the big Bone Daddy who's back here is going to be next on the menu. You can see there is a Screaming Meme Catapult in the back, and the Kimrian War Sphinxes have attacked but have found themselves overwhelmed. And back here, Lord Croak has welcomed to this one. Not a lot of infantry for him to use his abilities on this fight, so I mostly just used the Lore of Heavens over here to support this army. And let's just take a look here, look at the Razor Dons. The Sepulchral Stalkers shot my Razor Dons right before I got back over here into view and caused a lot of damage, but as soon as the Razor Dons got focused here, they just cut down the Sepulchral Stalkers. There was... wasn't even close. Just absolutely cut them down. Now there's some reinforcing infantry that came in from the second army that came to attack me rather than to, to come over and help against Gorok. So they are coming in late, and after I have mostly defeated the other Tomb King's infantry already. And this uh, engagement over here has pretty much come to an end. The Necropolis Knights with Halberds are going to disintegrate, and my Razor Dawn hunting packs are on the hunt, and they have the Bone Daddy in their sights. And over here, I'm able to easily just continue to cut through what little Tomb King infantry actually came to fight me, and then I'll be pushing forward, pushing the chariots back, pushing back all the archers. And here comes the Razor Dons. Got the second pack moving here soon, and they're going to move into range of the Bone Giant. And then back here, finally being freed from the cavalry fight, I had one unit of Horns ones left, and they are going to easily come chop down these skeleton archers who are being debuffed by that Stella. I used a Chain Lightning to cut through some of the Tomb King's infantry, meant to drop a Comet, but actually kind of misclicked that, but you can see that we've got a Curse of the Midnight Wind going there, and it's going to be a full-on crumbling for the Tomb Kings, and the Razor Dons will help help that happen a little quicker. 
So that's going to be it. The Tomb Kings and Lothurn are defeated yet again. That is multiple armies, at least five, maybe six armies of Tomb Kings that have fallen to me on Ulth 1. All right. Well, a decisive victory over King Rahotep and King Jonza. I don't know what both these guys were doing in Ulth 1, but they probably should have stayed in the desert. They picked a fight with some angry lizards, and it was not a fight that they win. <laughs> what did we get here? The war drum? Interesting. That's eh, okay. It's not great. It's not great. Alright, Virakara took the, the most damage there, but still in pretty good shape, and honestly, Gorok is... He's ready to fight. And uh, part of me kind of just wants to go hand it to these High Elves over here. And we should be able to. We should be able to. No reason why we can't. Let's go get it done. And we'll end the episode on a battle-heavy note. And get some good ones in here. Alright, Alethanar and his huge bunch of archers and swordmasters is awaiting me. On the opposite side of the battlefield. Here he is, Alethanar, the somewhat edgy High Elf, who kind of seems like he may be trying to live between both worlds a little, but he's not really a great Dark Elf either. What did he bring here? Did he bring some books? Yeah, got some scrolls and some books. He's just having a good old time out here. Gonna relax after this, have a picnic. Anyway, you can see the Swordmaster is prepping for battle. These guys look particularly awesome. Can't wait. Hopefully we get some more High Elf DLC eventually, too. I know that saying that on a Gorok campaign is somewhat blasphemous, but we see the Sisters of Avalorn, the Lothern Sea Guard, everybody just opening up on my forces here. And the Shredder of Lustria, of course, an easy target amongst all these. He's kind of hard to miss. I do have the Legion of Chakwa guarding Gorok and Lord Croak in the middle. And speaking of Gorok... These High Elves are going to wish that they hadn't come to this battle. My infantry in this army is just utterly absurd in the stats that it has. I mean, check it out, it's just a Saros Warrior here. 75 weapon damage, 60 attack, 58 defense. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely absurd. Absolutely absurd. Now, my Chameleon Skinks came in from the back left corner of the map. And they're going to assist the Thunderous One in cleaning up these archers quickly. The Thunderous One can only attack one archer, but the Chameleon Skinks have come in and cut down a significant number of sisters and other archers by shooting them in the back. This is going to draw the ire of a fr uh, Frostheart Phoenix. The Frostheart Phoenix is going to find that it can't hold three Skink units still, and it is going to become the target of their affection here. Maybe Infection, since they're using poison darts, and you can see it is dropping rapidly. My Chameleon Skinks are also very powerful. You can see that uh, despite having brought Swordmasters of Hoeth, they get absolutely swatted by my infantry line and Croak. Croak unleashed two level 3 Deliverance of Eatses that I didn't quite catch because we were looking at other things, but just nuked the two main pieces of the High Elf line and made it even easier for my infantry to cut on through. And now the biggest problem I have is the Shredder of Lustria can only attack one target at once. And he is being targeted by almost every archer on the battlefield. All spread out. They've come back from routing. And another issue that we have is on the power bar, because of all the Phoenix units here, it's uh, preventing me from being able to just chain route the High Elves quite as quickly as I would like to. So some of their units are routing and then coming back. And you can see these sisters coming back from routing are causing some trouble because they're shooting some of my rather large targets that don't really want to be in that type of fight. Now back here in the back, I get a little bit caught off guard and have to fight this Froxart Phoenix with my cavalry that I a little bit misused. And then same thing here with the Poha Sentinels, a little bit of misuse there. I was focused elsewhere. I've actually done pretty good on this campaign. I don't typically do those type of things. Now multiplayer, sure, I'll do that type of thing, but I usually do a little better <laughs> during the campaign matches. See here, there's some uh, regrouping Shadow Warriors going to be coming in, looking to fight my infantry. These guys have no business fighting against the Saurus I brought to this battle. Swordmasters, on the other hand, now that they're not going to be getting nuked by Croak and my units are a little more worn down, the Swordmasters will find themselves actually able to pick or keep up. 
can see that now I've got the Poha Sentinels and the Shredder involved and in kind of picking apart these regrouped archers who are trying to stop the Shredder, but yet another unit back here has gotten involved. And my Chameleon Skinks are finding themselves fighting back some cavalry, as well as trying to get rid of some Sisters of Avalorn, so a little bit of damage coming to them over here, but they managed to kill Elite and Ar at the same time. It's absolutely picked apart, so kind of ironic that he buffs up all the missiles in his army, but couldn't handle the ones in mine, and goes down to the Chameleon Skinks, and now that really starts to play havoc on the power bar, and then with some of the Frost Heart Phoenixes taking a lot of damage, that's it. The High Elves are done and driven. There's a word that comes to mind whenever I'm fighting these High Elf armies, and it's better. <laughs> As in, my troops are just better than theirs. I mean, and that was with double Chevron Swordmasters, and these guys still just got absolutely crapped on. But, you know, when you go rock. I didn't mean to actually sack that there because I actually want to get the replenishment. Uh, you know what, though? It's, it's kind of okay because I know that I'm not going to, like, actually own that settlement. This allows me to move back closer to home and get some replenishment. People were saying I'm missing the Greater Arcane Conduit here? Where, where am I missing a Greater Arcane Conduit with Croak? Is it like a, a battle, maybe? Let's take a look. Black Hunt? No. Someone said I'm missing the, the Greater Arcane Conduit ability with him, but I don't see it. And I thought he did have Arcane Conduit. Maybe it... Right, oh! It's right here in front of my face! Holy crap! Something I should have picked forever ago. Wow. There's a super genius. There is a super genius of unparalleled majesty. Alright, let's finish Woundmaker with their Scar Veteran. <laughs> wow. Just wow air. Another Woundmaker. These guys don't have their movement points over here. Let's see, we got our King Khan. Let's go with Earthing. Skink Priest, Lore of Heavens. I really want this guy on a Stegadon. But we're just going to have to wait a long time. Otherwise, he's fine where he's at. We just need to keep working on his magic capability. Cut down the cost of Comet because it's a good way of infantry busting. And then we can reissue Untainted. Let's put this Public Order. Chotek has been reestablished. Income is still very high. Let's just start finishing buildings everywhere we can finish buildings. Just money dump this. This is uh, late game building management for me. If you build it, you will make money. I mean, it's not always true. There's some buildings that don't make you any money back, but you know, it just feels good. It feels good to just, just do it. Head back up to Kalidor. Repair. Okay. Anyway, I think that will clean it up for this episode. Uh, on the next episode, we'll finish this, um, this right. The Dark Elves are nine turns from the end of theirs, and they're in pretty bad shape. Though at the moment, it looks like they actually control what they need to. I'm a little bit shocked here that they would be able to pull that off, because they were in bad shape. I say we call it Desperate Intervention. Well, I don't have the money this turn, but on the next turn, I'll probably call it Desperate Intervention against them. And see if we can stop them from completing the ritual. I think we get a chance to fight them if they complete the final ritual. If not, I don't know. Maybe we just lose. I... <laughs> anyway, hope you all enjoyed this episode. Air of Carthage signing out for now. I will see you soon.